folks. Dr. Umar Johnson recently was on uh, 105.1 FM out of New York, The Breakfast Club with DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. During the interview, Johnson talked about a whole range of issues that led to him uh, being the talk of black Twitter last week. Uh, and a lot of people were questioning his educa educational credentials. <laughs> Now, people ask me, what can we expect from a Donald Trump White House for black America? And the answer is real simple. You can expect exactly what you got from a Obama White House. Absolutely nothing. Black people know they're not American, but they will fight like hell to protect that identity because they don't want to be identified with who they really are, and that's being African. As long as you have a skill, you can always feed your family. But if all you got is college degrees, you might end up in an unemployment line. I'm a psychologist. Ain't too many black people running around looking for a psychologist to reveal all the skeletons in their closet. All right, folks, uh, joining us right now, Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank uh, you. For first and foremost, um, uh, it, it was amazing looking at this whole reaction. I mean, I'm sitting mm -hmm. here, uh, you, uh, you know, again, people asking all kinds of questions, things are blowing up. Uh, and so many people jumped on saying he's not a real doctor, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, where did you graduate from and you mm -hmm. got your Ph.D.? Mm -hmm. My undergraduate education was from Millersville University. Uh, three degrees, po political science, psychology, master's in school psychology. Subsequent to that, Pennsylvania certification as a school psychologist, which I've been for almost 20 years. After that, I got my educational leadership master's degree and principal certificate from Lehigh University in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I earned my doctorate degree from the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, American Psychological Association approved program, one of the top psychology training programs on the East Coast. Six degrees in all, and anyone can lift up a telephone and call and verify those degrees. So when, when you see folks uh, who, who, who question uh, your degrees, your response? It's because my narrative is a whole lot different from the average mainstream black scholar. I don't parrot the narrative that the American social order wants black scholars to parrot. I tell the truth. I don't scratch unless I itch and I don't dance unless I like the music. And because they're not used to having someone with a traditional education posit non-traditional views, people will automatically start to question his credentials. How did he get this far believing what he believes in? Well, you have to play the spook who sat by the door. When I got accepted into those three universities, they didn't know what I believed in. They didn't know what I st stood for. But as time went on, it revealed itself. But I'm unapologetically African, so I'm not really concerned with what people think about me personally. Um, I have a job to do, and that is to awaken the sleeping consciousness of African people, not just in America, but all across the world. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, you said during the interview, you said that uh, Mandarin was one of the official languages in South Africa. Yes, sir. And others said you were dead wrong. Yes, because I didn't clarify that I was speaking of it being an official language in the public school system of South Africa. So I should have clarified that Mandarin is an official language in the Republic of South Africa's school system. <laughs> It's not an official language in the country, it's an official language in the school system. And I was speaking of schools, but I didn't clarify that, so that's my responsibility. Uh, also, uh, during that particular interview, uh, you, you talked about a, a variety of issues that also uh, got people uh, talking. One of them uh, dealt with your views on interracial marriage. Yes, sir. And so, uh, it, and, and so explain that for folks who did not hear it. Uh, certainly, simply put, any black man who is with a woman who's not an African herself is going to have a difficult time getting respect from me. I believe black men need to be with black women. The black family is under attack. Only one out of every four black women gets married. The black woman is last likely to get married. She's the last married, the first divorced. We have, what, two-thirds of our children being raised by working class and impoverished single black female-led house homes. The destruction of a nation begins in the home of its families. And if we want to save black people, we have to save the black family. So, and in order to do that, black men have to commit themselves to black women. So, uh, so when you talk about not getting your respect, so, which, so if that's the case, you're saying uh, Senator Barack Obama, to, excuse me, President Barack Obama didn't get your respect because his dad uh, married a white woman? Oh, not at all. Would, uh, uh, would Harry Belafonte? Not at all. Would I want to be that? very clear about something. As Pan-Africanists, the product of an interracial union is an African. I have heroes who are biracial. Some of the grandfathers of Pan-Africanism were of mixed racial ancestry. You don't blame a child for how they got here. But I'm asking you this here. Harry Belafonte has a white wife. No respect for him? City it would party. be very, it doesn't city, matter. It city, doesn't matter your social status. So no, 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 I didn't say social, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about one who put the work right, in. Right, but you put so, him so, out. No, 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 I'm asking you. So mm -hmm. Harry Belafonte, 
Yes, sir. Sidney Poitier, Julian Bond, Vernon Jordan. And you're saying, naming all them to say what? No, these are all African American mm -hmm. men who have who have done some good things. No, who married white women. But you said you no, any any black man who marries a white woman will not get your respect. Can I respond? Yeah, go ahead. And what I'm telling you is this: I don't care who you name, I don't care how much work you did for black people. Your greatest commitment to black people is being committed to a black woman. It is still a contradiction. No matter how much you think you did for the struggle, if you really were concerned with black people, you would have committed yourself to a black woman. So it doesn't matter how successful they are. It doesn't matter how great you may claim them to be. At the end of the day, you didn't think enough about your own people to marry a woman who looks like you. Frederick Douglass. Yes, sir. An ancestor of mine. So when you say ancestor, what does that mean? Well, let me break it down. Because, again, some have said you tried to claim mm -hmm. that you are de a descendant of Frederick Douglass. Okay, so let's deal with that. So hold on one second. Here's a statement from the family. Uh, let me go ahead and read this, please. Um, the family of Frederick Douglass has received numerous in inquiries about Umar Johnson questioning his relationship to Frederick Douglass. There have also been questions about his legitimacy of his PhD and the handling of the donations he's received for his school that he is promoting. We can tell you with 100% certainty that he is not a descendant of Frederick Douglass. With that being said, Mr. Johnson is very careful not to build himself as a descendant, but he doesn't correct people when they refer to him in this way. He calls himself a blood relative, which is a nebulous reference designed to make people think he is a descendant. We have researched his explanation of being a blood relative to the great abolitionist. Some of the information he provides is accurate, but an extremely important piece of his explanation with regards to a documented relative of Frederick Douglass is false. The information he recites correctly is from the public record, so his knowledge of our family ancestry is far from definitive proof. Two things there. One, he's not a descendant of Frederick Douglass, okay? I would concur with that, all right? But then, too, you also heard that some of the things he says is correct. So the question becomes, he's either related or he's not, okay? So, now, are, you, so are you related? I'm about to answer your question okay. if you allow me to do that. I am a blood relative of Frederick Douglass. My name is on the family true. We have a family reunion every two years. What they're talking about, and I want to make sure you're clear, they're talking about whether or not I come through the loin of Frederick Douglass, which I do not, nor have I ever claimed, okay? I have more videos on YouTube than any other scholar. I speak around the world more than any other scholar. Show me where I've ever said I was a descendant. I've only claimed one thing, kinsmen. How are my kinsmen? If you ever read any of the autobiographies of Frederick Douglass, he talks about growing up on Tuckahoe Creek with Cousin Stephen. Cousin Stephen is Stephen Bailey. Dr. Umar Johnson's four times great-grandfather, whose grave I just visited last week, I go every year. Okay, that's my four times great-grandfather. He married my four times great-grandmother, Caroline Wilson Bailey. From that union came my three times great-grandfather, George Washington Bailey, the first black public school teacher on Eastern Shore, Maryland. He married Grandmom Annie. They had Grandmom Caroline. Okay, she had Grandma Vivian. Grandma Vivian married a Spanish-speaking Cuban immigrant, Grandpa Cicero. They had Grandma Ida, who's still alive, who married James Johnson, who had my father Jamal, who married my mama Barbara, and from that union I was born. I am a blood of belly. I am not married in. What they're talking about is strictly descendancy, something I've never claimed. Am I akin? Do I directly come from the loin of the first cousin and potentially half-brother of Frederick Douglass? And the reason I say potentially, the slave master who owned our family, a white man named Aaron Anthony, raped Frederick's mother and raped Stephen's mother, my ancestor. S and there's significant evidence to suggest that. Some people could still argue, though, that they were not brothers because it's not conclusive. Fine, throw that out. I'm still a kinsman because I come through the blood of his first cousin. You talked about, again, respect. You respect I don't talk about respect. No, I get no, no, tremendous no, respect no, from no, my no, people. I, I, I'm not talking about that. Um, do you respect Frederick Douglass? Obviously, yes. But he had a white wife. He did. So. I, I, this one should, 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 I'm going to clarify. Why, why, why is that an issue? Why, I mean, why is that? If, if you put in the work mm -hmm. and you have the history, who, who cares who you marry? I already answered that question, and I told you I don't care how much work you put in. If you don't commit yourself to a black woman, ultimately you wasn't totally committed to the struggle. Even Frederick Douglass. Even Frederick Douglass has to be criticized, as I did on The Breakfast Club. Now, it has to be put in context. He didn't marry the white woman until he was an old man after his wife, Anna Murray Douglas, of 50 years, a blue-black chocolate woman through whom all my cousins were born. He was an old man when he did it, but nonetheless, he did it. And yes, he has to be criticized on that because a black man needs to be with a black woman. And it is a contract.
contradiction. I don't care how much work you think you've done for black folks to not commit yourself to a black woman. Oh, tight one second. I got more questions when we come back. I would argue the reason black men marry white women is because they wish they were white themselves. And having the white man's prize, his queen, is a psychological symbol to myself that I am equal to him. We're back with Dr. Umar Johnson. Uh, in one of the, in that particular statement, uh, the family also addressed this here. Uh, you talked about taking over uh, the buildings or the land of a black of a black school that was shut down. Yes, HBCU sir. St. Paul's College. Uh, and you were raising money for it. First of yes, all, how sir. much money has been raised, and what's the status of that project? Well, St. Paul's has been sold. Approximately three to five months ago, I was told by the auction company in charge of the sale that it was been sold to a developer. So how much money was raised, what the people, people gave, all kind of people gave, how much was raised and what's the status of that $700,000 and the status is we're still looking for a school and the status is my start date for FDMG will be 8-21-18 or if at all it may be delayed to 8-21-19 which is the anniversary of the Nat Turner War. We say looking for a school, why not start a charter school? I mean, you can start a school. Because charter schools are owned by the state and I'm a Pan-Africanist. I believe what is to be done for black people must be done by black people. Why do I want a charter school? So you want, so you want a private school? Exactly. Law. Independent school. Lauren. Um, so the question of <laughs> interracial marriage, I yes, mean, come on, man. You're too smart for this. We got 43. Oh, I'm too smart for what? We got 43 million black people in this country. And that we got means over what? 190 million white people. You're going to sit here and say that if you got a black person, black a white person get that. married, a black person, a white person get married, one can't understand the other person's struggle. You've seen, it's not you've about seen Tim Wise, right? You've seen it's Reverend about Wallace. You've seen white people who understand racism Sist very well. That doesn't the mean they're going to do anything about it. The other thing that is obviously well, true is they understand racism when you see things. Like the murder of Medgar Evers, like the murder and, of Martin Luther King. They understand and, racism. And just what fine. did they do they about it? They understand us gaining just fine, and that's why murder happened. Based on right? what? So the idea that somehow a white person can't understand our struggle? I no could way. care less what they understand. I'm no asking way. you, what have they done systematically he already to told improve you that. the opportunities he of white folks? He did not tell oh, me yes, that. Oh, yes, you did tell me that. He did not that. tell me that. You're going to tell me that guys like Tim Wise and Reverend Wallace don't understand racism? What about race Tim America? Wise? They don't understand racism. He in America? articulates they don't racism. So what has he done? There are no white people that understand race in America. It. There's, there's not no a white, white person in, in America. There's no white people that understand race in America. There's second. not a white in, person. Uh, them going to Eugene. There's not a white person in America who has ever worked to systematically eliminate the white privilege that they benefit from vis-a-vis -vis your oppression. You, you, you are know, lying. You know, Eugene, you know Eugene, 190 so, million so, people in America. Eugene. In so, uh, so, oh, 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 we're not going to go there. We're not. I, I haven't. Called me a liar and you're cool. Well, it's a fact that watch you're lying. You it's a fact that you're lying. It's a fact that you're lying. I understand you. To say that. 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 No, everybody, one second. Several things I don't allow. I don't allow the N-word. I don't allow coon. We can talk to one another and disagree, but I do not use racial epithets against and black that's people. that's fine, but he called no, me no, a no, liar. No, 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 no. So I, the language no, no. needs Ra to be watched on Racial both epithets sides. will not be used on this show. And that's fine. By anybody. But how we talk no, no, to each but other needs to be You can say whatever you want, but no racial epithets will be used on this show about black people to black people. Eugene, your question. So from your paradigm, from your perspective, civil rights acts, isn't an act of, of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Current criminal justice reform legislation moving isn't a current act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. Folk that funded the civil rights movement in the, in the 50s and 60s isn't an act of white folk stepping up on behalf of black folk. I'm sorry, as an American, because I define myself as an American, sure an African American. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I live in a country that moves forward together. And I say that as a Republican. We move mm -hmm. forward together. Yes, we have individual struggle. Yes, we have struggle. I'm not talking yes, about we have, yes, no, no, no. Yes, we have, we have, we have, we have systematic, we have systematic, we have Finish it, yeah. finish it, 15 seconds, then We have systematic struggles, and together as a country, moving forward to defeat those struggles. Really? So, based on what you said, I want you to give me examples of white folk, not individuals, but systematically. Why can't they be individuals? Excuse me. Why can't they be individuals? One second, one second. I know you can't wait one to second finish. Answer, but but one finish. second answer. Can I finish? Go, go. Okay, I'm going. Okay? You cannot name anything systematically done ever in this country by white people to equal the playing field for black folks. The Civil Rights Act, Congress literally sits behind us. The Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act.
Correct. Lynn are you aware? Both of them. Are you aware? Are you aware? Hey, can I, Both of them. White people Second. are proud of you, son. Let me ask Scott Bolden. Real quick. I, I think the, the terminology and the narrative being used is a little misleading, not from you, but from this dialogue right here. Okay. Um, you know, it's one thing to sympathize with the struggle. It's another one to be, to empathize with the struggle. Very different. When you talk about marriage being a political choice, and that one of the things, arguments that you made that I tend to agree with is that that a if you don't marry a black woman then she can never support and comfort and value your day-to-day -day struggle as a black man uh, that being said uh, I do think that the the level of the rhetoric that you use in regard to your pan-africanism uh, is um, is is difficult for many of us quote in the mainstream to get our arms around but this issue about black men and white women in the civil rights struggle is not a new discussion my mother was a civil rights activist in mm -hmm. Chicago and she would often uh, complain privately that one, you can't sleep black, you can't sleep white and talk black, Thank if you, you will. And Thank that's you. always been in the American struggle, American, African American struggle with ourselves. Yes, the other thing is that we struggle with our own psychology about okay. self love and okay. otherwise. <laughs> and if we can get our arms around that, that does make sense. Okay. But you would have to say that you know and, 190 and, million and, people. But you're being too. One, one second. You one would second. have to claim that. Answer, one individuals second. don't matter. You'd have to claim no, that. No, go ahead and respond. Go ahead. And I agree with, 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 with my brother's Scott. comments, mm -hmm. Brother Scott. He brought up the Civil Rights Bill, but what he did not talk about in relation to the Civil Rights Bill is there were two words included in that bill that ultimately served to take away from black people what that bill was intended to deliver. They added gender and they added sexual orientation. And as a result of that, white women and homosexuals have been able to strip black America from the intended gains of the Civil Rights Act. So there was still racism in that bill if you will study that history. So, Umar, your question was, did anyone, had anyone black ever systematically done, I mean, no. has anyone white ever systematically Not done anything? Systematically, systematically. white America. So LBJ, every, LBJ wait, would be the answer for that, no, because that's get, the government. No, I don't think you that's heard the question. That's a systematic move. No, you didn't hear the question. I, what I has? No, you fine. did not. No, yeah, you I didn't. Did. Yeah, you're did. so quick to defend white <laughs> yeah, folks that they, you're not listening. No, I'm not trying to I defend white folks. I have 45 folks. seconds, so restate the question and give an answer. Okay. You got 45 right, seconds. Let's get an answer. The question was, mm -hmm. what has white America done? Right. Not individuals. <laughs> Systematically, not individuals. cannot. You Why won't even let me finish. Yeah, because you're that in love with white folks. You won't even let me finish. Point on everything. Finish, finish, literally. Three times. Twenty seconds. There is no bigger system than twenty seconds. I'll finish. No, and in twenty seconds, I would say that the panel that you have here, who are extremely intelligent, do not represent the everyday black man and woman struggles, and then because of that, they can articulate. And you represent forty-three million people in this country. I don't think so. Don't appreciate that. Don't weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.